you tell us what you do and where you work? I'm Megan. I'm here from ACT. We're Abuse Counseling and Treatment. We're the Certified Domestic and Sexual Violence Center. So we're here in the community providing free, safe, and confidential services for victims of domestic and sexual violence. Oh, that's very cool. Um, going back to the counseling services, what, yeah. what are the, some of the things that you, your organization helps counsel people on or what they're for? Yeah, counseling is a really great safe space for someone to have a trusted person to talk to. So again, um, unfortunately, we live in a world where about one in four women and one in 10 men experience physical abuse, family violence, sexual assault um, by someone who's supposed to care for them, right? So whether that's whether they saw something in childhood where that was their family dynamics and that's affected them, maybe they have some, some thoughts of depression, and depressive feelings and anxiety, counseling is a safe space to, to work on those things and have someone there for you. It could also be someone's in a relationship where they don't, they love the person they're in a relationship with, but that person is angry and controlling and abusive and they're not feeling great and they're having anxiety. If it's safe for them to come in for counseling, our counselors are available to um, be someone who's there to support them, help provide some basic um, education on healthy relationships and dynamics and communication and start working with them on whatever they want to talk about and get support for. It could be if someone has previously been in an abu abusive relationship or if someone's had their partner arrested and they need someone to talk to. You know, arrests right now are high because there's been a lots of rates of high physical violence and domestic violence with the pandemic. If someone has seen that happen to them and they want to talk, we're here to be free support for them on if that's the situation they're going through. So is it is it fair to say that most victims suffer in silence mm. and have to rationalize the crimes that are being committed against them and possibly think that they've either done something wrong or they deserve what's happening to them? Yes. I do think it's fair to say a great majority of people are suffering in silence or shame or confusion or their world has been distorted enough to where um, it's almost been normalized sometimes or it takes something really major to happen to realize, wait, this is really wrong. So yes, because it's not just law enforcement that they may not confide in or report to or call. They may no longer feel like they can talk to their parents about it because their parents will judge them or may no longer be allowed to go to church or they feel awkward talking to their church friends about it or their pastor or they may no longer um, have relationships with friends who have been like, oh, you should break up with them, you should break up with her, they're no good for you. And that friend is no longer willing to hear them out or be supportive because they're trying to practice tough love. And we all have to do what we have to do and stay sane and keep our boundaries in relationships, but it often um, puts that victim in a situation where they're alone. And that's what the abuser wants and usually is working towards, keeping them isolated, whether that's just from their supports or physically isolates them by not letting them do things or moving them away to somewhere new. If you knew somebody who was silent mm -hmm. and sees this interview, what, would you, what advice would you give them? You're not alone. We're here for you. Um, we're 24 seven and we're the folks who, this is, um, we have a lot of staff who've been around for a long time who care about this um, subject and are experts in the subject and want to be supportive and I think a lot of people who come to our services and talk to us are so surprised with the way we handle it. We're very different than other agencies because our training, our certifications, everything, we're confidential. We're confidential like a lawyer and a client is. We're protected by Florida legislation that we can promise confidentiality. There's exceptions like child abuse and if someone's threatening to hurt themselves or hurt another person seriously, of course, there's exceptions. But for the most part, being able to promise someone, your boss doesn't have to know. You're not going to HR. Law enforcement's not involved unless you wanna call them. Giving someone who has not been able to make choices for themselves, giving them some education, some support, and guiding them through so they can make the decision that they feel is best for them, their life, their kids, that's really empowering, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to just be educational, offer support, offer guidance. We have lots of resources, connections, relationships with, with necessary community partners, whether that's legal, um, housing partners, different things like that. So um, I would want to tell someone you're not alone. 
This is more common than you think. It's not your fault. Um, you're not silly or, you know, a lot of people blame themselves. Why did I stay in it this long? Or didn't I see something sooner? Or, you know, then they feel like people around them are judging them. We're never judgmental. Um, and that 24 seven helpline, I don't know. I'm nervous about calling people or going in somewhere. That feels like a really big step, right? But to be able to confidentially call and you don't even have to give your name and you can still get help, I think that's really great for people to know. And we get over 15,000 calls to that helpline a year. Wow. So it tells you we're busy. One of the biggest things we hear people say or what people do lovingly is, oh, just leave them, just get out of the relationship. Why are you still with him? That usually comes from a place of loving that person and wanting what's best for them, right? But we have to remember that abuse doesn't end when the relationship ends. That abusive partner can still stalk, harass, abuse, try to get custody of the kids and use that as abusive um, behaviors and different things like that. So it's not a one-stop answer that fixes everything with a magic wand. That person's still going to need support, guidance, and safety planning. Safety planning is huge. If they do want to leave and they want to get themselves in a safe environment, that's why we have things like shelter, um, and start over in a fresh way for themselves or for themselves and their kids, the most dangerous time is when the abuser knows they want to leave, they've left, or they've left and they've started dating someone new. So this is not meant to discourage anyone from leaving. It's meant to show this is why services like ours exist. So we have that 24-7 helpline someone can call and we're the experts in, all right, so you want to leave or you're planning on leaving. How do you do it safely? Let's make sure you have all the necessary documents. Do you have the money you need? If someone can prepare to do that ahead of time and we can help them, that's a lot of stress and anxiety and that can be removed and they can be safer, their kids can be safer. And that's really, really important because it can get dangerous even if that person has never been physically violent before when that person leaves the relationship, that person may start to use physical violence to try to keep them home, keep them in the relationship. It's important to keep in mind domestic violence. A lot of us think of physical assault and injury. That can happen, that does happen. But what we find is a lot of people don't know what's going on um, qualifies as getting help or they think they can't call us, act, when this isn't true. A domestic violence relationship is when one partner is using abusive behaviors to keep control. That may be physical violence, but that could also be financial control. That could be making threats. That could be emotional and verbal abuse that's really damaging someone's self-esteem. That could be um, hurting the kids or leveraging the kids against someone. That could be throwing things or not letting someone leave a room. That could be injuring a pet. Um, any of those tactics that are going to make someone fearful and change their behavior, that's an abusive controlling relationship. That's domestic violence. So if someone's hearing about this going, oh, and they're checking off boxes of things they've experienced or felt, that is just as valid and harmful as physical violence. And in fact, a lot of research says emotional and verbal abuse is very, is very harmful and damaging for someone. So it's not just emotional and verbal abuse, or at least it's not physical. Um, it's still very harmful, and we have all of our services qualify for someone who's experiencing those forms of abuse. And we do have relationships with um, an animal refuge who will take someone's pets. That's really important. One of my favorite services. Um, a lot of people who know they're in an abusive relationship who want to come to shelter report that they don't because they're afraid of what will happen to their pets. We don't have pets in our shelters because of allergies and different things, but we have a relationship with a really great organization, Operation Pet Rescue in Lee County, and then a different one in different counties, who will take someone's pet for a certain amount of time, go over everything with them, extend it if necessary, so someone doesn't have to worry about the safety of their pet if they need to come to shelter. So they're able to reunite with their pet later. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So our ACT 24-7 helpline is 239-939-3112. If you're watching this, you might already be on the internet. If you're here visiting or you're not from Southwest Florida, or if you have a loved one who's not here in Southwest Florida, there is an 800 domestic violence national helpline you can Google. 
but it's nice to know that there's a local organization and a local number here to help, and that's 239-939-3112. 24-7. Well, thank you guys for this space and this time. You know, we're an advocacy agency and then there's law enforcement and we each do different things, but you all see so much and you have a lot of followers here in the community. So thank you for sharing and using the law enforcement platform to help share more about domestic violence. And like you said, Sergeant, about a lot of people are suffering in silence. So thank you for you guys recognizing and noting that and understanding the dynamics at play. Sounds good.